Justin, I know a guy bicycles hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin, the guy. We are going to pack a bike. Um, a lot of people are afraid of shipping bikes and fair point, there is a lot to shipping and there is also a scary part of shipping. Um, but I'm gonna try to show you how to take the scary out of it, most of it, like I take the scary out of used bikes, take the scary out of shipping um, there's a few things I've been doing this for years and success rate has been pretty high knock on wood um, the thing is is you just have to do as much as you can to prevent and things will happen that's why you put insurance on it just like everything else in life right so um, and you know if you do it right it's it's the good chances it's gonna be very no damage to very minimal um, might be just some adjustments and so forth but other than that, you should be able to pull it out of the box, put it together and go. There's several companies that have actually taken this concept and just rolled with it. Um, there's one that's like Bike Belong, they, or Bike, uh, I don't know. I forget what the, the first one is like mail order only. Actually the first mail order company straight out of the you know, bike to uh, customer was Airborne back in the 90s. Um, since then, there's been, um, Canyon, which is a European mar uh, market bike company that moved into the United States a few years back, scared the heck out of our local uh, specialized truck and other dealers because they're like, oh, we can sell a bike direct to you cheaper and you just put it together yourself and you don't have to worry about going to the bike shop. Well, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons of that, so we're not going to go into that, but they've actually proven the concept that you can take a bike, buy it, ship it to your house, put it together, and go for a ride. Well, I'm on a micro level of that. <laughs> micro um yeah so i basically trying to provide good used road bikes for those and i was mainly selling locally and then a friend of mine and she was like well people need to buy these need this need elsewhere you know how to pack and ship right i'm like oh yeah i can do that um not a problem i'm trying to make a minimum as possible so for me for road bikes this may not apply to mountain bikes or any other kind of bikes out there, but taking this video, you may pick up some tips on that if you're shipping a different bike other than a road bike, this, this style. Um, newer road bikes have different kind of cable routing. Keep that in mind. Disclaimer. Um, anyway, here we go. Um, I'm gonna go over the parts that I usually do. I, I get like the roll of bubble wrap, a big one, it's like 10, 12 bucks at Walmart. Um, you buy that or you can buy it off of Amazon. I cut it down in strips and I cut the strips in half so I have like these lengthy strips here that I just put everywhere. And then I, a lot of it is mainly just cardboard, a whole bunch of packing tape, um, more cardboard. And sometimes at the bike shop, if you get a bike from a uh, bike box from a bike shop, you can get some of these little nice packing bits but sometimes they won't have them. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what you do when you don't have them. Um, and actually I utilize cardboard, so it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much a thing. Um, so anyway, um, and what I've done already is I pre, pre done, preset, pre staged my stuff. Um, all my tape, I, you know, cut in little strips and I put a little pull tab on the end so it's easier for the person that gets this to take the bike apart. Because if you ever have tried to take plastic off of plastic off of plastic and there's nothing to pull off of, it's a freaking nightmare. So that really helps take the bike apart quicker or take the packaging off the bike quicker. So, um, yeah, so this is the bit where I'm gonna go and fast forward and you're not gonna hear me talk because this is just a thing, you know? Um, you don't wanna hear me jibber jabber I'm gonna put each little piece of tape on there. You wanna see this fast forward, right? I would too. Anyway, I'll see you at the other end. I'll talk to you about other tidbits. Oh, one thing, one last uh, thing before I dive in. What I take off the bike is the pedals, the front wheel, the front brake, the handlebars, and the seat post. So when you reassemble it, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five things you have to re reinstall, um, which is pretty, pretty minimal when you buy a bike or when a bike comes to a bike shop and we have to assemble it there, it's a lot more pieces than that. So anyway, um, without further ado, let's get this rolling.
Okay, so I got the bike all basically bubble wrapped up and cardboard and zip tied. Um, so going through all the process, I'm gonna recap here real quick, is um, I try to cover every surface area that may rub against each other with bubble wrap at least. And the areas that have more of a contact piece, I use try to use cardboard to insulate it. Um, Axe as well as the outside, to so the outside cardboard box. This is a manufacturer or fitting piece here, which I would have done the same thing with this, this one on the other side too. It's the same concept. Um, you know, take all the components and sandwich them all and wrap it around with a nice cardboard box. The idea is everything in here is pretty secure. Um, so it's not going to uh, wiggle too much. And the parts box, I shoved it underneath and taped it so it's all secure and tucked out out of the way. So on this box here, I measured it out. Um, I, and most of the bike boxes that I use or what I get are a little bit too big. The idea is you want it to be scaled down so the bike fits snug inside the box so it's not loosening around. If you get a box that's a little bit bigger, that's fine. Just make sure you fill in that void with um, some packing material to keep it from shifting around, keep it more secure, like a warm hug. Um, basically, you want them pretty tight and um, pretty snug. So what I do is I measure it out and um, alter the box and shrink it down. And actually, where I actually alter it, I use um, a liquid nail on the cardboard where, and also packing tape. It's not gonna come apart and actually reinforces that in anyway. So it's actually a stronger point of the box that originally came from where I do the modifications. And I try to get as high and as close as the height as well as length. Um, the width on these, you know, a lot of the boxes are usually between eight or nine inches wide. There are some bike boxes out there that are a lot bigger. Then you have a void issue going side to side. So that's something you want to keep in mind too. So all, all angles, basically the top, bottom, front, back, side to side, you want to make sure it's snug. So we're going to go ahead and slide this in here. So, so carefully, Make sure my supports on the outside don't pop off. And slides in like so, so it's all nice and secure in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. And this guy can be just wedged around the outside here. It's not gonna go anywhere. That's pretty standard on most bike box bikes coming to the bike shop when they're new. So when I do it from here, since I know this is secure, and up and down is the tire, and the tires are great um, protectors because the tire itself obviously has some give to it. Sometimes I deflate them a little bit so I have more of a mush. So you may, well, always inspect your inflate your tires before you go for a ride anyway. So you look at the side on that. Anyway, um, then here I make sure that's going to close up. You can use wood glue. I like liquid nail because it's just easier. So I get a and a gun here, and let's put a thin one there. I've had some people say I put too much on and it's harder to open up the box, but hey, you know, you really have to secure not pop apart while it's in transit. So, so I get it on there. Put my first support tape, kind of sandwiches everything together. Like so. I like to do a uh, seam cover tape. That just covers that edge, so it looks likely for it to pop open. And I just proceed on down the line. Try not to cover up these little handholds um, here, so it gives the people who are transporting a, a hand position to uh, carry it, so it's not uh, cumbersome. fortunate to be close to a uh, UPS hub so there I uh, that skips a pickup and at least one truck trip to the actual um, hub so you don't have you know I don't drop it off a UPS store it just go straight to the hub so you miss one one of the trips so protect it a little bit not that it's gonna be damaged too much from the um, UPS store or whatever you want to go to 
the hub, but if you can drop it off the hubs, it's just one less. Um, so that, that just gives, you know, gives me a little more added confidence. Plus I can talk to the guys, <laughs> gals that work there. Um, and, you know, they, have, they know me, so they may at least cobble it a little bit until it goes out of the, out of the state. So anyway, um, yeah, so we have that part of it. And when you're looking at, when you have it all boxed up and so forth, you want to make sure you cover up all any additional markings from the manufacturer, especially barcodes and all that. Also, I'll print off a to and from separate than the packing slip. Reason being is that it comes damaged with the packing slip. The driver has something to reference um, when it's out and about. So I usually just put one of these, but you can put a couple of them in there. And that's with all packaging. It's always good to do is like so. Then me measuring these bad boys, they go by, they round up. So this is gonna be 51 inches. So it's eight and a half, so I'm gonna go nine. So 51, nine, and this one's right at 29. If they, they do audits, and if it's off one inch or something like that, um, they'll do adjustments. Most of the times the adjustments are pretty min minimal, but when you're looking at this size of the box, once you hit that extra inch over to the next classification size, that takes this box from the price that you were thinking you're gonna ship it to and almost doubling. So you wanna make sure you stay within that cubic inch range. Um, you know, it, it reference the UPS or FedEx or whoever you're gonna go by. Um, you can't do postal with bike, bikes, they're just too big. So you have to go through DHL, uh, FedEx, and UPS are the three main three main uh, delivery services that'll, that'll handle box bikes. And honestly, working in the bike shop, a lot of it did come from freight, sure, but most of the other shipments of bikes usually came from FedEx or UPS. They know how to handle them. They know how to stack and pack them. They don't want to deal with any insurance claims. So obviously they're going to do as, you know, better, you know, as much as they can to prevent any kind of damage. And these are stackable, stackable this way, but not sideways. So they'll stack stuff up on top of them as there's noted on side of it. That's why I like to grab the bike boxes from bike shops because they already have the please this way up with the bike box, that kind of thing. So. There you go. That's uh, this guy is ready to be labeled and onto its new home. Thank you for your time. If you like these videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like me on my Facebook page, or hey, go to my email. You know, join my email list on my website too. Either way, you can find me. Um, hope this uh, gives you some insight on packing and shipping a box bike, and basically what I do too. Just a little insights of what I do. So, until next time, have a great day from the garage. Bye.